Day one patch. This is our fiftieth episode, and we had a special episode planned. Everyone canceled on us. Well, just just our guest stars. Our guest stars. Our guests. Yeah, they uh, they weren't. I called them guest stars. People you've seen on the show before, but we wanted yeah. them all here in the room. Barack and <laughs> Ryan, Ryan messaged <laughs> us. I. Ryan messaged us today, just like, well, oh, this person canceled. Oh, that sucked. And this one. Yeah. Okay. And then this one. Yeah. Like, oh, jeez. <laughs> So it's a sad day here. Um, we're still gonna have try to have a good show for you guys, and everyone you know and trust is here. So we got Matt Lawrence, oh, Martin Isaacs. Everyone you know and trust. Everyone you know and is trust. That kind of like a dick <laughs> on the other people. What? Is that what you're doing? No. Oh. But yeah, but the, the the audience doesn't know those people as well. They're no longer trustworthy. Those people know. Like what? Uh, Ellen's been on a couple times. Don't she was say, on. First, don't say the names. She was on our first episode. <laughs> Very first episode. Yeah, yes. and so I thought it would be nice to have her on back on the fiftieth. Aaron couldn't make it. So yeah, Aaron's useless. Don't be nice to Aaron. <laughs> every time oh I see goodness. him, I'm like, what the heck are you doing here? Aaron? But the people who he's, could... he's always on. It. Every time I sign on, he's always on. Aaron, yeah, yeah. yeah he's never not on. Yeah, yeah, that's why he's the best person to play with. But you just hop on, you can just start playing anything. Uh, the people who couldn't make it. Uh, some of them were sick. We hope they feel better. And everyone is welcome back anytime on the show. I don't know for our no. legendary 51st episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. um... Yeah, I hope you guys come back to the show. We uh, we encourage your support. And Adriano Petty is here. What's up? Looking looking kind of happy, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, a <laughs> uh, quick thank you to William Key, and uh, he's part of the Stardust Drive podcast. Uh, so yeah, check out their their channel on YouTube. They do a lot of great stuff over there. A bunch of different shows. They have their own podcast. It's all good stuff. They were nice enough to mention us on their their uh, their uh, channel there. So you know they're good guys, so give them a check out, and thank you again to them. Uh, we really appreciate that, because uh, we're all trying to get viewers, right? So it's They a made big... us a nice promo. Yeah, a really nice promo, actually. I was really happy. That was that was really nice. So check out them. They're uh, Stardust Drive podcast again. Um, really great stuff over there. And uh, we're going to start with what we're playing. I have the I have the layout messed up, actually. Yeah. I have Ashley <laughs> Marty uh, second on the agenda here. Man, you're, just, you're, you're ready for it. <laughs> So what we're playing, and uh, Marty, why don't you go first? Is it because you know what I was playing? Well, no, because I know Adriano never likes to go first. I hate going first. I like going, like going first. I always go to Matt. Okay, so you change so it. So it's going to go with you. Um, I completed The Last of Us. And, and your thoughts. Applause, thank you. Your <laughs> thoughts. We need to hear your thoughts. It was pretty incredible. Yeah. It was pretty... Great. The DLC finish or I the main done game? The DLC. I just the beat DLC. The main if you want a better game. package, play the DLC. I will at one point play the DLC, but this game is just it's big. I don't I don't know how to word it. It's 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 big. There's a whole bunch of details in it. Yeah. The writing is phenomenal. The voice acting is I I'm gonna say the best in any game I've played. It's really damn good, eh? Yeah, I don't. I don't remember anyone. Even the, like the goons, they, even they got some good voice acting. <laughs> yeah. Um. And even the combat was good. Mm-hmm. I was surprised by the combat. I was. I enjoyed myself throughout. Um. You know what I found about the combat is like it's it's pretty thrilling because you have such you have so few resources. Mm-hmm. Um. But you never feel like you're absolutely weak when you're playing as Joel, at least. Yeah. Right? Um, Because even if you're out of ammo, you can go up and still still fight the guy with your fists, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, you're still scared uh, when you're sneaking around. And it's not... I I hate stealth games. Yeah. I'll come out and admit that. I hate stealth games. But I didn't really feel like this was your your standard stealth game. Just because you felt like you could... You had a chance. Yeah, you could could go in there and murder everybody, but I played it pretty stealthy. I got really damn good with the bow, actually. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know what to say about this game. What do you mean? It was just good. It was, it was great. It was great, yeah. It was just a great game. The best game of last generation, right? I would say it's the best, but not necessarily my favorite. That's a good point. I, I, It's my favorite game of, like... It's it's in my top five. Yeah. Which is amazing for uh, such a new game. What did you do at the draft part? Excuse me? 
What, what, did, you, what did you do with the giraffe? Well, okay, wait. The spoilers from spoilers here on out. Here. That's yeah. I don't want to spoil that. No, no. Just like that, that, that. That's hardly a spoiler. You know what I did? Well, I know what you did. I know what you did too. <laughs> I, I I know you, so I know what you did. Uh, I sat there for like five minutes. You sat. Oh, I. I did not want that scene to end. I'm, I'm just gonna say right now. Everyone else is like, oh, they're so majestic and all this crap. And I shot one right in the ass and it was running away. <laughs> you ruined the best scene in the game. Yeah, that scene Ryan, is so beautiful. And it's just, I, I, didn't, I did not want that scene to end. I texted Ryan right after I did it too. This, this game did something though. Um, I've only maybe done this really in one other game. Where if I'm walking with somebody, I look back at them. I looked back at Ellie a lot. To make sure she was okay? Make sure she was okay. Yeah. Took care of her. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um... The, the making of actually just released on YouTube uh, pretty recently. I was watching it today, and uh, they, they kind of talk about how they, they build up that relationship um, and make you make you actually care about Ellie by the end of the game. And actually, the, at the very end scene, I had to like take a breath after that. Like my heart stopped actually, because really? it, well, yeah, I had, I had to like actually just kind of sit there and, and absorb it because I, it was just such an amazing adventure. So. Adrian, Adrian, when are you gonna play that? When are you gonna play the Last of Us? Uh, when am I gonna play it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, PlayStation Now, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> there, there's a good possibility I may never play it. I would like to. I don't know if I'll ever get to it. Oh man. Um, Put it on your bucket list. Just wait till the Fine. HBO bucket series list. and watch it. Hmm? Just wait till the HBO series and watch it. That might work. There's an yeah. HBO series. No. But that would. No, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. It would have to be Neil Druckmann and uh, Bruce. Um, forget the other guy's name. And Those Ellen, guys would have to Ellen direct Page it, is Ellie, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, Matt. What have you been playing? Um, nothing. What? This week. What? Lots of midterms and whatnot. So I've been not you and doing your school much, and unfortunately, nothing at all. No, all iPad that games. fancy book learnings. <laughs> all that, all that fancy book learning. Schools for dummies. Wait, wait, no. You played some GTA with us. Oh, that's true. That's true. There were a couple of things I did take off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's there true. you go. The beginning of this week. So Just slipping a little GTA. Be a little GTA. It's always GTA with me. I don't know. It's always oh, that was that was the funnest actually, Matt. When you were driving in that uh, that fire truck, and you were oh, just going yeah. back and forth, and the police were chasing you like crazy. Yeah. And it's you like you try to hit me and Aaron as we were just walking by. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous. I kept asking Aaron for help and running him over. Yeah. I do have to apologize to Aaron because you remember his little Vespa scooter he was driving around. Yeah. And it was all shot up and stuff, and he finally drove it all the way to the the repair shop, and I I drove that armored truck in behind him, and it blew up his his Vespa. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Every time I see Aaron on his best buy, I blow it up. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, Adriano, since Matt's playing GTA. Um, I finally started. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'll let you say it. Some Tomb Raider. There you go. Yeah. Uh, how far are you in- into it? Uh, my percentage uh, when I exited today was 59%. Oh, oh Jesus. Pretty close to being done, actually. Yeah, I thought I was done. And then it just kept on going. Yeah, there's a part like that. You know. I yeah, I'm like I'm like oh, this seems like the end of the game, and then it's like nope, nope, the, there's more to it, and then, so uh, I'm starting to get a little worn out by it. It uh, what what did I describe to you? It as it was it was like an Uncharted, Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed. and Alan Wake. And Alan Wake, yeah. that's what it, like that's what it feels like. Where are you getting the Alan Wake? It the uh, the the level design. If, Levels oh, appro- okay. I kind of know the, what you the, mean. If, yeah. uh, if level is an appropriate term for it, just uh, the environment. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So, how come you're getting worn out? What's what's the problem? I don't know. Just like like usually for my first sitting of a of a, a game I haven't played before, I'll usually only do like like an hour. Like I, I usually make the first one very short. But with Tomb Raider, like I played mo- most of my percentage was done in that first sitting. Okay. Like like I walked away with like I think thirty nine or forty percent of the oh, game. Oh wow. Okay. And then, like, my next two were just, like, just worn down. Like, today I only played for, like, an hour. Mm-hmm. But. So you just wear yourself out. It's not the game. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Because I, cause I was also playing Nintendo. I was playing. Uh, what's the Mario one on, on Wii U? Um, Mario. The new. The one with Luigi. The new. new Mario Super, U. Mario U and Luigi U. Yeah. Yeah. I was playing that one today. Was, and then. So I was playing that for, like, two, three hours. And then I went and played Tomb Raider. Okay, <laughs> so it might be, but I, I, I Tomb Raider, I'm ready for it to be done. And everything with Tomb Raider is usually like when there is an open, technically it's open world, but when it's open world, with like all all these artifacts you can go find. I'm usually pretty excited to go and mm-hmm. get at least most of them. Like with this one, I just don't care. 
I actually 100 percent of the game on uh, the Definitive Edition. Really? Yeah. I don't. Which is unusual for me to actually f- go and find artifacts and stuff. Like See, that. I don't like. For me, I don't like. I just no. I want to get to the waypoint. The only, the only thing I'll go out of my way to do are the tombs. Yeah. That that's it. Other than that, I don't care for anything else. Just want the game to be done. I feel, if, I feel you on that one. If you want to pick up this game, uh, if you have a PlayStation Plus, you'll be getting it free next month. So look some exciting. You mean stuff. you you can get it free today? Oh. Yes. <laughs> well, Check it, it happens p- in a random point in the month. Tuesdays, <laughs> right? Or does it, is it? I thought it was at a random point. I, I don't remember. I thought it was the second week, but I could be wrong. It might be. I, I just kind of go in them randomly in the month. And they, yeah, they drop at weird points, don't they? Yeah. Because the, the the games for gold, they drop like every two weeks, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, it's always a half month. Yeah. What you playing, Ryan? Uh, I've been playing kind of quite a few of different things. Um, GTA with Matt and Aaron. Um, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Yes, that's right. With, with Aaron again. We played a lot of... Um, Aaron went... 100 straight games in the top three of Gun Game on Black Ops 2. Are you freaking kidding me? That's amazing, eh? And I was there for his his one failure where he got got fourth place. So, And um, played some Ghosts, which was Mayhem. Ghosts is <laughs> was bad. Like, are you uh, waiting for a reaction from somebody? <laughs> I don't know what I was waiting for. I was just... That's what I've been doing. You wanna... You wanna... And, then, and then actually me and Aaron finished uh, Dead Space 3 uh, today. Oh, After man, like a couple month uh, uh, break, we, we finally finished it. You know what me and you have been playing? What? Motorstorm. Yeah. <laughs> We've been playing that a bunch the last like week or we so. We played it twice. That's a bunch for Motorstorm. <laughs> and, that, and that's Which ridiculous. One? Can you name that... me another human being that's played Motorstorm twice in like the last I'm year? I'm sure there's people playing it still. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, which one? Which one? Two of them. The first and the third one. Uh, or second, second and third. Second and third. Second. Apocalypse is bad. What Probably a bad game. Really bad. It's really bad. Yeah. All right, so that's what we're playing. Um, we're going to move on to Apps with Marty. And you have a pretty pretty big app this week uh, app for not having an app. <laughs> <laughs> so take it away, Marty. <laughs> I will be review. Are these reviews? These are reviews. Yeah, because yeah. you, you do a, a suggestion of whether to, to download or not download. Which is the correct way to review something. Um, I'm going to be talking about GarageBand for the iOS. Um... I primarily use this for recording guitar tracks and vocals. Um, there's a little, there's a bunch of actually little connectors you can buy. You can uh, plug your patch cord into your iPad or your iPhone if you like. Um, they're about twenty bucks, I'd say. Um, they're called iRigs. And the thing I like about the um, GarageBand on I- iOS is that they give you this full, well, not full. They give you a big selection of amps you can choose from and pre-made guitar sounds. So if you're a guitar player, I really recommend this app because you can get a lot of cool sounds and just record like little demo tracks. Uh, you can also add loops onto it like for, uh, for some drumming. You can make a half-decent song um, on this thing. There is a limit. I believe it is 45 minutes record time. Um, Which is kind of more than enough, right? But if you're doing something like this podcast, for example, you you wouldn't be able to. Um, So there are some limitations in that sense. Also, if you're a bass player, you're just shit out of luck here because there are no bass amps. How's that feel over there, Mr. Bass Player? (laughs) You can still record bass, though, right? Yeah, you can record it through one of the guitar amps. And there is a smart bass on there. They have smart instruments. Now, what these are is... um, just little pre-made sounds for guitars and keyboards and basses and drums and even strings. And basically you can just um, tap and the guitar pretty much plays itself. Or you can choose the chords or notes or little strum patterns. So if you're not, even if you're not uh, a musician, you can even get some functionality out of this app. Um, there is a keyboard built in, so if you're a keyboard player... There's a bunch of different sounds you can choose, and then you just play play it on screen. Um, the cool thing I noticed today is that there is some integration with other apps that you have on your device. So say you have some sort of synthesizer app, uh, you can use it to record inside of GarageBand. I'm not quite sure how that works, to be honest, but it's there if you need well, it. Well, I think GarageBand would run in the background. Because yeah. it's, it's able to do that. You're able to record while you're, you have other apps. So then you, I guess you could open it up. And... Yeah. 
fiddle around. Um, there was also some compatibility with the desktop version. I believe. I believe you can only do it one way, though. You can either only open a song that you have made on the iPad into the desktop version. That would make sense because it'd be easier because there's more features on the desktop version. Yeah. Than the iPad version, but I think you can do it both ways. I'm not hundred percent sure on that. Yeah. And there are some limitations depending on what device you own as well. I believe this is an iPad 3, and I'm not able to access um, some of the new features they put out with the latest update. I think you can have up to 16 tracks if you have one of the newer iPads. I'm limited to 8 on this one. Um, do you recall the price of this? Uh, if it, if you're getting a new iPad, I think it comes free. It comes, it's free, yeah. Um, but if you don't, it's like either like four ninety nine or five ninety nine. I'm pretty sure it's five bucks. I can't. I hate that you can't see the price <laughs> of things you download. I, mean, I could look it up, but um, yeah. you could do the app shopper. I, I deleted that. Oh Jesus! I'll do it. <laughs> I'll just keep spewing bullshit while you do that. That was the end of my review. Mine is free. Well, I get, with my iPad Mini. Because you, it's a new device. But you, we got it before that. It just says GarageBand by Apple free. Is it free now then? I have no idea. All right. <laughs> but uh, some bands have actually used this uh, app to record like full albums and stuff. The yeah, Gorillas yeah. price uh, drop. Price drop. Free. Well, there Holy you crap. go. It's free. It's Fuck you me. Like I paid the... for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, new. Then it's just been a bunch of updates, and back in October, it went down to free, and it's been free ever since. There you go. Back in October 22nd. Oh, yeah. We got we got in-app purchases. Now I'm excited. <laughs> I'm going to download ones? that right now. You can purchase the instruments. That's what it is. Yeah, $4.99 for the, uh, for the uh, in-app purchases. That's what it was. Complete I'm collection good. of GarageBand instruments and sounds. Yeah. So I got those. You yes. have those because you bought it when it was the full package. Yep. There you go. So what do you? What does the free one do? The free one you get like the smart piano and like I think the smart guitar. But if you want like the smart drums and the the smart. So bass I don't use and... any of those, so that would just be perfect for someone like me. Then. Yeah, it, oh. and you can still it has the full recording functionality. Um, you just don't get those instrument packs. There you go. Okay. So Marty, is it a download or a not download? Since it's free, I'm definitely gonna recommend it. <laughs> um. But if you want to get into those other sounds, I'm assuming the, the purchase comes with the loops as well. Mm, are there loops on there? There's loops, yeah. You can add in like little drum beats. Okay, probably then. Yeah. Also, I want to mention that you can um, you can share your songs that you created. You can either email them, go to Facebook, or go straight to SoundCloud and YouTube. Cool. Which is pretty damn sweet. Or just uh, export them to iTunes. If the app was four ninety nine, like by default, still would you still recommend it? How I bought it, I I, I, I mean five bucks for like a almost professional level recording app. I mean, it is pretty good. Fair enough. I did record uh, except you know, for the forty minute record limitation. Yep. But if you're recording music, that's no problem. Unless you're doing something just massive. Yeah. Well, you can you can always like record and like we could even like record and then be like wait, okay. You know yeah. I mean, you could do that. Yeah. Actually, just have you know what, you know what this I'm gonna could do? be recorded on GarageBand right now. <laughs> I'm going to make us a special 50th episode song using this app. That would be awesome. There you That'd go. Be really just great. do it by Sunday, uh, by today. I could, do, <laughs> I could do it when we get pizza later. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Marty. Um, also, today's our 50th episode, so we're doing a special giveaway. Uh, so stay tuned to the end of the podcast. Um, Where we announce what we're going to be doing? Yeah, so it's you get we'll a free be, copy of GarageBand. No, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll tell you what to do to win and um, how to enter to win. Sorry, not just to yeah. win. You don't just win. How to enter for the chance uh, to win? Um, and thank you to uh, the good folks at uh, Ossian, Ossian Studios uh, Inc. O O O S S I A N. If you want to look it up, yeah, um, Canadian developer. Yeah, Canadian Valley. So big thanks to them. Um, check that out, check them out on the App Store and stay tuned for a chance to win their latest app called The Shadow Sun. The Shadow Sun. Okay. Valued at seven ninety nine, I believe. And it's like a it's like a big RPG, right? It's an RPG, yeah. So I mean, there you go. 
All right, let's stop into our first story here. Um, next Assassin's Creed game won't be set in Japan. Oh, that breaks my heart. Really? You wanted you wanted to see one in Japan? The ninjas I'd, have been cool. That makes sense, doesn't it? It does. So, like, does that not make sense? Ninjas are assassins. It, like, what the heck? Like the fan concept art of like what an assassin could look like in Japan, it just looked amazing. Oh yeah, I remember seeing that. That's right. So this comes from Ubisoft Toronto boss uh, Jade Raymond. Um, she she ruled out. Is that a she? That, yeah, that's she, definitely she. She's she, she, play. she ruled out any samurai. She's hot too. Have you ever seen her? <laughs> <laughs> she ruled out any like samurai historical historical era periods like kind of stuff. Um, but she did say that it, it, having that would be kind of cool. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll see it later on. Maybe not just the next one. I don't know. It's hard to say right now. But another rumor for 2014 for Assassin's Creed is that we might be getting two versions of Assassin's Creed. Oh, you guys geez. remember that? They just redeemed themselves with Assassin's Creed 4. Yeah. Now they're just going to flood the market again. Well, like would they break into two teams? I'm not sure what that would happen. What would happen there? We, but I think I think the two games would be like one for last gen and one for current gen is what I've read. But would it be the same game? Just just well, no, they clearly. wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't say that they're making two different games. Then. They could they could do the handheld thing again, but do it every year now. <coughs> but they're not doing a handheld. I don't think the rumor said that last gen and, and current gen. Oh, okay, fair enough. But that would be weird. Like, why would you want? If I if you're a big fan of Assassin's Creed, you had to buy both copies now, because you want you want the whole. Thing and built in. I, well, I have every single special edition, but I will not be purchasing three hundred dollars <laughs> of Assassin's Creed. And you year. lost your save. Yep. Oh, so my sad. PS3 broke. There goes the save. So sad. Yeah. They should have told you they would wipe it. Well, okay, this is the problem. So I had two hard drives, and then I sent. They're like, please put the original hard drive in. So I put the original hard drive in. I left my old hard drive out, obviously, and I thought I would just put that back in. So I got it back. It booted, everything's fine. So I put my old hard drive in. That's still my save. It has to and format it was like it. it was like, please format. And I looked it up, and it was like, oh, it's encrypted. You can use all this decryption crap. And I'm like, oh, this is a disaster. Mm. Well, that's too bad, man. Yep. <laughs> so there goes that game. Uh, this next this next story here kind of makes me wish I bought my 2DS a little bit later. Um, if you're looking to buy a 2DS, 3DS, or 3DS XL system, and uh, also purchase a game, obviously, which you would, right? Um, you'll be getting Pokemon... X or Y free with that purchase. Um, so all you need to do is buy a Nintendo 2DS, 3DS, or 3DS XL. Link your new system to your Club Nintendo account. Buy now it has to be one of these games. So make sure you you pick up one of these games: Mario Kart 7, Super Mario 3D Land, Animal Crossing New Leaf, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, Lego City Undercover: The Chase Begins, or Yoshi's New Island. And then register your is game. Is that out yet? No, it's coming out of Link. Register your <laughs> game at the uh, game at uh, Club Nintendo and get your free copy of uh, Pokemon X or Y. That's a pretty awesome deal. Yeah. Uh, this promotion is only valid from March 1st to the 31st. Because all those games are good, too. Yeah, you're in, you're in for two good games, then. Yeah. And I'm so excited for Yoshi's Island. I played, like the, it, I played the crap out of the Game Boy Advance one. Yeah. Holy you mean man. the Super Nintendo one? Is that what the Game Boy Advance one was? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure it's just a port. I don't... Was it? Yeah, the thing is, it came out on the Super Nintendo first, and then it no, ported. I'm almost confident no, 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 it came no, no, no. out. Yeah, this, the Yoshi's Island on Game Boy Advance is a Super Nintendo is a port of the Super Nintendo one. No, that's a look up. I don't believe that. Yoshi's Island GBA. Unless there was two, I don't know. It was it with like the little like baby Mario. And yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a port. I thought that was new. I thought that was new. Yeah, that was new. Hmm. I thought there was one. On, okay, this is what I thought it was. I thought the. You think of the was... game called Yoshi? Maybe there's just one called Yoshi. No, uh, Yoshi's Island. There's one on the D. I thought there was one on the DS that was a remake of that. That's what I thought. Like the original DS. I could be wrong though. Woo! Yoshi's <laughs> Island. Super Mario World Two. Yoshi's Island. That's what you're talking about. No. Super Mario World. No, it's it's just Yoshi's Island. It's a standalone Yoshi's game. Baby Mario. Baby and it's yeah. the, the, the squiggle line. Squiggle line. Like it, it's... Jesus, hold on. Let Do you me... have a picture of it there? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to get it, grab a screenshot. <laughs> it looks too new to be on a... They could have they done a completely overhaul. kind of. Maybe. Like, yeah. Who knows? That one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
that I, got, is I, got, a, I got news for you. That's Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island for the Super Nintendo Entertainment Holy System. Holy poop. Which was ported over to the GBA. He's right. There's the cover art. Oh, my God. Sorry to shatter your world well, no, there, Mr. Fine. Johnson. It's a, it's a good game. I, I, I have the cartridge at home. I have the original. The Super, original one? Yeah, Super Mario wow. cartridge. Yeah. A well, Super Nintendo cartridge. Well, the GBA one's good, too. That was fantastic. And, and it pissed me off because the GBA one is available on Virtual Console for the Nintendo Wii U. But the Super Nintendo version isn't. But you want the Super Nintendo? What's wrong? What's what's wrong with the new? Yeah, well, if it's a port, you can't you can't download like you can't download the GBA version on a Nintendo Wii. You can only download the GBA version on the your, your DS Virtual Console. Oh, so on the Wii you can only get the the SNES the one. The cartridge ver like the full console cartridge versions. Yeah, but because and they didn't release it on there, some sort of licensing issue. <laughs> but the GBA version. Wait, licensing issue on first party titles and, and yeah, and yeah. There, there, there's something. There's something about that. That's what. That's why I read once. But then the GBA version, the port, the one that you, that you thought was the original, yeah. is available on the DS marketplace. Oh, okay. Well, that stinks. What the yeah. heck is going on? Yeah. Another proof that Nintendo. That, that, that's really, it's really <laughs> funny that that you thought that was a Game Boy Advance. Well, I don't know. I was a kid. I didn't. I didn't know. I played oh, it a bunch man. and I loved it. I wasn't a big Nintendo fan. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad I was the one to... to why? <laughs> I don't know why. I'm not, I'm not heartbroken or anything. It makes no difference to me. The game was still good and I'm still excited for the new one. Yeah, and it's it's technically Super Mario World 2. But they just named it Yoshi's Island? Yeah. Okay. Um, Marty, you're excited for South Park. Oh, Stick of Lord. Truth. Oh, Lord. I'm excited. I think you're lucky living here in North America, though, because you will be receiving a uncensored version. Uh, uh, unlike some parts of the uh, the world, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and I believe Australia, will be getting, will be getting censored copies. Um, do they specify why they are being censored? It was a market decision. But this was a market decision by uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Oh, it was them that decided. Yeah, so instead, players will be getting a replacement background and description text. The text would, would be selected by Matt Stone and Trey Parker. I think they'll still be able to have a little fun with that. Probably, but um, seven scenes of about 20 seconds are each censored in, in those parts of the uh, the world there. Um, the regulations are probably so strict, they didn't want to try to force it through. That's surprising, though. They're they're pretty... They, they hate censorship, those two. But they're the ones who made the choice, I think. Surprising. Right? It's possible that they were like... They were like um, if it gets refused, there's going to be this much more money to resubmit it. So they're like, well, maybe maybe they're running out of money. I don't know. Right? Oh, know. so they're, they're taking, I guess they, you're saying they could be taking a chance now censoring the stuff they don't think will work in those markets. Yeah. And then they'll send it out instead of having to get it delayed. And Yeah, like like if, they, if they're like, no, this doesn't work, ship it back. But you have to apply. And I don't know if it costs money, but it probably does. Yeah. You know? I don't understand Australia. Australia is really censored. Like I, That's so weird. They're, they're, they they censor everything though. Like they I don't think they're allowed to see like the, any dismemberment. I think. Really? Like I think Call of Duty World of War was like banned or something, or they had to like make, take. Yeah, it a lot of games them. get banned over there. Yeah, you're not allowed to like and see they, the arms they, fall off and stuff. They have really high prices for games over there too, right? Yeah, it's, it's bad. In. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they ship games in, like right? They have everything has to be shipped in pretty much. They're basically. Well, I mean, I mean like you know, they're physically everything's physically shipped in, obviously, yeah. but they, they don't have their own like versions of like. Are they are they ordering it from like the U.S. or like Japan or something? Well, no, like they they they. So, for example, if a game has to be modified, I, in my opinion, it would probably be like, like Ubisoft Montreal or something would make a new version, and then they'd have to ship it in from the U.S. to stock the stores. So that special version, that's a whole special process just for Australia. Just for Australia. So that's all right. Um, Marty, what are your thoughts on Batman: Arkham Origins? Pales in comparison to the first two games. So any uh, any thoughts of getting the DLC? <laughs> no, um, they upset me with what they said about the DLC. And what did they say? They said we're not gonna fix any bugs anymore. We're too busy working on this DLC. The only bugs they'll fix are. No, uh, they didn't even say that. They said if we ever are gonna fix bugs, it's gonna be because of game breaking bugs. Like that that that. Uh, it's a big if at the start of that one. But what they're talking about is like games that like uh, bugs that would stop you from progressing in yeah, the story. Progression. But they they only might. Yeah. Fix those. Yeah. Too busy working on this DLC. And the DLC is called Cold Cold Heart, and it's uh it's about Mr. Freeze. I thought it was so the Riddler. This would be this would be Batman's first <laughs> encounter with Mr. Freeze, one of the best boss battles of Arkham uh, City, right? Yep. 
That was pretty cool. Actually challenging. Yeah. And you had to change your tactics up to, uh, to actually mm-hmm. beat them. Um, I'll be buying. I'll be playing that because I bought the season pass. Hmm. Has any DLC been released so far? I, don't know. This, this I haven't played the, the game. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Didn't they have the one DLC? Mm. Hello, uh, the, the the training of Batman, like when he first learns everything. Oh, oh yeah, right. it's a, like uh, Wayne Manor Some, training facility, something like that. Yeah. Or, or was it was it like a Wayne Manor training facility thing, or was it a? Uh, I thought it was like a whole like League of Shadows thing. Yeah, when Batman learns how to be Batman. Anyway. Um, now, this DLC will not be coming on the Wii U uh, due to lack of demand. <laughs> so. That's really sad. It's, it's getting sad now. It's good. I'm crying. It's Tears good. are flying on They need, they need to know that, that, they, that they messed up. So I'm assuming people who purchased the season pass will be refunded. For the Wii U. Yeah. yeah. Was there... Did was they release the season pass? I thought they already announced that no DLC was coming. I don't know. Like they have for like Assassin's Creed and stuff. Well, they have like season pass. Well, Assassin's like Creed, the they had to refund it, right? Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, I'm already sorry. If, if, if somebody pre-ordered it or, or whatever, right when it came out. Oh, yeah. All right. They got chapped. <laughs> On to our next story here. Uh, Minecraft. You should all know about Minecraft by now. Holy crap. <sighs> it has passed 100 million. Now, not, not sales on the PC. Registered users on the PC. Uh, only about 14.3 million of those are actual sales. Wait, wait, wait what? what? You, you can sign up and just, like, go on the forums. <laughs> oh, okay. So. okay. Oh. Um, so that's about 14.3 million copies sold. That's ridiculous. That's, that is pretty ridiculous. But how much, how much does it cost? Isn't it like 15 bucks or like 20 bucks? I think it's $20 in there. I think it's pounds. I don't remember if it's in pounds, but it's in like whatever. Oh, like I see. It, yeah, in that currency. Yeah. I paid 20 back in beta, I think. Maybe 10. I thought it was 15 in beta. Yeah. It, it, it progressively increased. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, on Xbox 360, it sold 10 million. Jeez. So those are complete sales. That's not just registered users. Um, PS3, which it just came out on, has already reached a million copies. And plus the, what did they say? They made like 10 million or some, something like that. Uh, uh, just on Christmas Day on I on like mobile devices. Yeah, that's iOS. right. So the Minecraft Pocket Edition, which is not the full console or PC version, um, it sold uh, 10 million copies as of May 2013. Jesus. So that was a uh, that's about a year ago almost, right? Well, a yeah. little less than a year, I guess, right? That's ridiculous. And then they're also going to come to Xbox One, PS4, and Vita. So more sales are on the way for uh, Mojang. Uh, Notch as is he Mo, is he is what's Mojang is that the company he made Mojang or yeah Mojang or Mojang I don't know Mo, how you want yeah. to say but <laughs> uh, soft J yeah but that, he's that's, Notch that's the company yeah then there's okay. Notch and there's Jeb as well Jeb's the guy who's doing it now right yeah Jeb's I think the one that's like maintaining Minecraft and then like I guess Notch is moving on other things if I understand that properly whatever happened to Scrolls I think it's still in development I think that's what I think that's what Notch is doing like a bunch whatever other whatever else they do mm-hmm. and then Jeb is just like a maintenance kind of guy right now. Okay. Uh, speaking of Minecraft, official Minecraft movie might be coming from Warner Brothers. And um, the guy who made the Lego movie, which was actually got some pretty good reviews, and a lot of people are talking it's talking hilarious. about it. You went and saw it, Matt? I did. What'd you think? Very funny. Yeah? I we, want to go see it. I didn't get a chance. Put, put it this way. There's like... It's still in theaters, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah but like, I'm going to go... like Because my nephew went, and like, so my brother took my nephew. Oh, so you have no excuse to go now? Yeah, I'm like, well... We should, day one patch should go see it. I, I went with five five people from college, and there's like a bunch of kids in there. The kids weren't laughing at all, and there's like us five like pissing our pants laughing. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but it was all right. So yeah, the Lego Movie producer, uh, Rory Lee, he might be on board to actually um, be working on the Minecraft movie. So it, that could turn out good then. Yeah, that's true. Possibly. But I don't, I don't really know what Minecraft story there is. Like, with Lego, at least well, you, they you'd have... Well, like the... you'd write the story, I guess. Somehow. Like, oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. All right, the... Um, if you're ever hoping for a connectless Xbox One, um, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, the Microsoft United Kingdom marketing director, Harvey Eagle, said that we're in it for the long haul, and that Connect is an integral... is, is integral to Xbox One. Uh, good for them for sticking to their guns. Just the wrong ones. The wrong guns. Yeah, well, we kind of bullied them into taking it, uh, not always online. We can't bully them you know to what? take I the think, connect away. I think if everything went as Microsoft wanted it to go, it might be a decent console for those people who don't care about 
It would have been a better online. console. I'm going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, I think they've made more of a mess than, than anything. Because I, I hear people saying that the U. I've, I've not used the Xbox One to give any opinions on it, but I've heard people say that the interface seems like it's made to be used with Connect, and that's how you're supposed to navigate it and stuff. It there is a lot of things where I'm like <laughs> I'll be sitting on my home screen, and I can't remember if it was like the first day or whatever, but for some reason there was no settings tile. And I was like, how the hell do I get to settings? And like, the only way I actually knew how to get to settings was to say Xbox, go to settings. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of stuff like that, I guess people are saying. But yeah. How much do you actually fiddle around in the user interface, though? A decent amount. Um, I do use Connect for everything, though, to yeah. be honest. Because I'll, I'll, like, if I get, like, if I want to go grab something to eat or something, I'll be, like, leaving the room and just tell it to pause and I'll just keep walking. I don't, you know, I don't need to touch controller right at all or mm-hmm. anything like that. And is it working better for you? I don't. I only use the voice. I don't use the hands because I'm in. No, but that's what I mean. Is the other voice commands the, going better uh, than they used to? There, there's good days and there's bad days. <laughs> <laughs> there's days I'll be sitting there like on, Xbox on. I can say it like 15 times. It'll be like, mm-hmm. all right, good. You probably screwed it up somehow. It, it probably doesn't, you, you probably say it different every single time, and it doesn't rem- remember your voice. Well, what I've heard the problem is is that <laughs> I set it up originally at like four in the morning. Yeah. And what I was supposed to do was I was supposed to crank my sound system to almost full, and then say like do the calibration test. So I think it's whenever my furnace is on in, in the room, it has like a uh, like in the background like a buzzing because it's just a furnace running. Yeah. So I think it can't hear me because it's listening. It thinks that my room's quiet. So it's listening for a quiet, like like not that loud of a noise. Mm-hmm. So I should probably redo the calibration. I'm willing to guess, but yeah. And there's some updates coming to Xbox One. Uh, soon. I think one already dropped, right? One one dropped, yeah. Um, it was weird. It was weird. So I was like, I turned on my Xbox and it wasn't. It, I didn't think it turned on, and then the screen like did you know like when if a screen is like not receiving a signal but it's not saying no signal it's like black like really black with lcd yep. and then you'll see like the backlight come on but it's still black well it was like sitting at that like really black screen for a while and then it turned like the other thing and then it showed this just this green bar i was like okay and it just like slowly filled up but there it, i didn't ha- had no like definition of where it was going to end mm-hmm. and then it, it sat it, like it went in and it made the noise like if it was booting but it showed the xbox logo and it turned and froze and i was like okay <laughs> And the only thing that would work was I could use my 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 uh, controller and I turned it off. And I researched, and people are saying don't do that because apparently it was updating, but it never told me it was still updating. They said if you could do that, you could brick it. I'm like, oh, good. Oh, jeez. So I booted it back up. It took like 15 minutes, and it worked. Wow. All right. That's pretty weird. I don't, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to Metal Gear Solid. Um, me and Marty are actually playing, uh, doing a let's play of the first Metal Gear Solid. Um, there's about three episodes up, probably four by the time this podcast posts. Um, getting some good views on them, and it's it's pretty hilarious because we're having a hard time playing it. Uh, You're gonna see us die a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite enjoyable. Um, so you get that check out it'd be, on, be on our channel. They upload randomly, so hit that subscribe button. Um, but speaking of Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes, um, which is the precursor or the prequel, I guess. To Phantom Pain, it um, it's gotten a lot of flack recently for being like a two or three hour campaign, and they're charging like forty dollars for it. Uh, the price has been reduced to thirty dollars. So there you go. How do you guys feel about that? Do you think game length matters uh, in in re- in re- relation to price? Uh, I don't think it should, but I think it does. You think it does? Yeah. Now, why don't you think it should? Because if something is three hours but amazing, but amazingly well done game, then mm-hmm. you could argue the price should be more. But this is a little bit different, though. They're calling this a prequel for so that just kind of sets it in a different category. If it was a standalone, maybe forty dollars might be justifiable. But since they're almost saying like you need to play this. If you want the full enjoyment out of yeah. Phantom Pain, was it really forty? Is, is that what they're though? saying? You need to play. It? You not, have not to play saying, this? but I think Marty's getting Marty's getting at that point there that it's a prequel. So it's saying like, if I want to play this before it, like with with, with your rule, you had to play games in chronological order, right? So if you were a Metal Gear fan, uh, would you have my, to get my my? That's not an absolute rule. Okay, uh, I would love to go into that, but <laughs> for another time. But for the most part, yeah, sure. So you would have you would want to play um, Ground Zeroes before Phantom Pain. Uh, if it's been designated as a prequel, yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Because like, the, the issue is, like, a game like Skyrim, which is, like, 300 hours, you can basically sink into that $60 game compared to Call of Duty, $60 for five hours. I guess the online would be more, but... Um, say, like, Gone Home, right? There's, like, 15 bucks. Oh, well, that's a good argument, yeah. Three yeah. hours, you know? And in, in what kind of game is this? Uh, Ground Zeroes? Yeah, is it going to be open think... world like the, like the Phantom Pain? Yeah, probably. Is it going to be like three hours of cutscenes like every MGS game? <laughs> That's a good point. Now, they, they, are, they are saying it's longer because there's like collectibles and different other missions and whatnot, I guess. But um, depending on how, how you play it, too. I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious to see how this goes. I think this is going to be kind of like the Grand, or Grand, 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 Grand Turismo 5, I think. Grand the Turismo prologue? 5's prologue. I don't think that did well. It was always on like the end. I think of it did because because GTA has like a lot of, or not GTA, G, uh, Gran Turismo <laughs> GT has uh, a lot of fans, and uh, Gran Turismo Six just came out, sold a bunch. That's fair, but I I still I, kind of with Marty where a prologue feels like it it should be cheap or should be like a tack on or something. I don't I don't like this idea actually. It's almost like they're selling a retail copy of DLC before the game comes out. That's what I'm thinking. It is they're <laughs> yeah. slicing it off the game and then. Shoving it and like I, I've said this, the game I'm not sure if I said this on the podcast before, but but the the Metal Gear Solid games are known for being long. Yeah. So if you tack on a three hour edition, it makes no difference. Yeah. The games are long, you know. And there's ex- there's exclusives <laughs> for each console, right? Uh, like DLC and stuff. Right? Yeah, I believe for the PlayStation side, you can play as like the old school pixelated snake. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what the exclusive for Xbox is. Yeah. Anyway. Let's go on like, like microtransactions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this series is being capitalized almost yeah. now. It's a great series, though. It's nice. a good series, but now it's kind of like then they're like, oh, now it's a good series. But the weird, the weird thing is that Hideo Kojima, the creator, he, he's always like, I'm done with Metal Gear Solid. I'm not going to make another game. Yeah. He said this since like back in like the first Metal Gear, like after he made the first Metal Gear, they're like do a second one. He's like, oh, I'm done with that series, and look where we are now. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, let's go on to our favorite topic, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo is going to be killing all its online support for the Wii. Um, so you won't be able to play like Mario Kart Wii, Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Um, this is starting in May. They have online support in general? It was on a oh, come on. Matt. Come <laughs> Why don't you just spin in their face? <laughs> I would. <laughs> so um, they're gonna, you're going to be losing online play, matchmaking, leaderboards, and support for many Wii, DS, and DSi games um, starting May 20th. Now, t- to be fair, the Wii online was bad. It was there, It though. was free. It was there. Can't, it was can't free. really complain when it was free. It was free, but it was bad. It was real bad. <laughs> but, Marty, you said you played um, I played Brawl. Smash Bros. You played, yeah, you played it online. I loved it, actually. And I, I'm sure a lot of people play Mario Kart online, right? Yeah. So I even added just random people back in the day. <laughs> Friend codes? <laughs> back yeah. in the day. Like on like YouTube <laughs> comments, people are like, add me. I love how the Wii is back in the day. <laughs> well, this is the early. This is when Smash Bros. first came out. Well, this, what was the Wii's release? Two thousand five, six, or two thousand six? Doesn't it seem so old? Because like the Wii like came out, it was big for like a year, year or two, and then just died off. And so it feels like it's a really old console. Yeah, I still mm. play it. <laughs> I st- yeah. Wow. All right. Well, get your uh, get your Wii playing in this month. <laughs> Wii playing in this month. Um, and our last story here: uh, Wii U is a powerhouse. This is from Donkey Kong Country developer, <laughs> Retro Studios president, Michael Kelba. What is this, a comparison to like a power PC from the 80s? Well, no, he's comparing it to the Wii. <laughs> oh, so com- when comparing the Wii Compared to the Wii, yeah. Uh, okay, fine. This guy is finally in last gen. That's what this guy is. Um, here's a quote from him. It was really fun being able to crack that open for the first time and learning HD techniques, pixel shading, oh. having a lot more horsepower, and how that impacts the team. It was really fun to watch our artists just go crazy because now they didn't have to really worry about um, polygons anymore. Make as many as you want. To, so to be fair, he, he runs a place called Retro Studios. Well, they made Donkey Kong. No, uh, oh no, that's what. But I mean, is like he's they're not the used retro. To, yeah, retro. They're not used to anything. It's like holy crap! We oh, use three pixels instead yeah. of two. So that's the uh, damn zoom right over your head. Yeah, that's four colors good. instead of friggin' one. See, I'm pointing them at Marty. I'm being pointed at. If you want to point, Marty. I'm not getting a point. I know it already. All right, do you want to go over the giveaway uh, details, Adrian? You want me to go over it? Yeah, because I'm not really sure what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right I'll, I can go over it. You want me to go over it? Yeah. Do you remember what I said? Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay. You can correct me. All right, so we're giving away um, 
Ocean Studios Incorporated, say their name again, and that's O-S-S-I-A-N, if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, we're giving away their their new app, The Shadow Sun, which is two a, copies of it. Two copies of it, sorry, uh, which is a seven ninety nine. I uh, think yeah, dollar yeah, that's right. value. No, that's right. That's right. Eight dollars. Yep, seven ninety nine uh, dollar value each, um, and we're giving that away if to two random viewers or listeners, I guess, who comment on our YouTube post of on, this, on this on this episode, this episode, episode fifty YouTube. people to be to be clear. And if you're wondering, the game is it's like an open world RPG. Correct. You're saying 15 hours of gameplay, at least. You can get that for free. Yeah, for free. Mm-hmm. Now, this is how it's going to work. You're going to comment, blah, blah, blah. We're going to choose two randoms. We're going to message you privately. And if you do not answer within a certain amount of days, which we will include in that message, you have to just answer us. And then we'll send the code. We don't want to just send a code to a bot or something like that, right? Then we will withdraw that. We'll send you a message saying you haven't responded, blah, blah, blah. And then we'll go on to another random person. And then next week on episode 51... We will announce those winners probably by username or however you have your, your account set up, of course. Okay. Or some variation of that. Some variation you know, of that. The yeah. comment can be whatever you want. Yeah, Open the comment can be like... bad, we're not going you know to... Wait. Gonna, we're not going to be biased. Respond to our philosophical corner question. Yeah, is that... that? Yeah, I like that. Now, now, it doesn't have to be that, but uh, it'd be nice to hear your guys' views. <laughs> yeah. Any comment on this on this YouTube... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think we can be picky, Rod. Yeah, I'm yeah, just we're saying. I'm not going to be picky here. Okay. I would like to hear from you guys. That's oh, fine. fine. So any, any comment, good, bad, anything, we're just going to literally do like a little scroll test or something and just choose two randoms. And if you're listening to this on iTunes... No, oh, we're not going to do a scroll test. I know how we're going to do it. Wait, wait. If you're listening to this on iTunes, make sure you hit up the YouTube channel and go to the episode 50 episode, this episode right here, um, to, act- to enter. Okay. Yep. We don't know how to do iTunes. I don't know how you would even do that but anyway marty the app is available for ipad and iphone universal yes. yeah marty do you have a philosophical corner question for us today i have something do you want to point i do want to i want i want you to point at me <laughs> okay the industry it's always moving <laughs> good, start, good start good <laughs> start and there's always fads coming and going, such okay. as motion controls and 3D. Yep. Where are we heading next, and what will the next fad be? Uh, Can I get kind of a point? Yeah. Maybe with your pinky? Mm. Yeah. What will the next fad be? I don't know. Well, well I, no, I, I, I got a good... Yeah, yeah. That's a legit that's, question. Yeah, of course. Uh, anyone want to take a crack at that first? So I, I'm gonna say 3D gaming is pretty much dead now. That's just. I think even Sony's announced that. Right. I mean, they were the big, yeah. they were the big pushers of 3D gaming. Casual gaming is kind of dead. Like that was the, the biggest thing ever. It's like we need to make this game more casual. Uh, now, now it's kind of just worked in without being mentioned. I suppose, yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I think it's gonna be open world. You think that's a fad though? It was a fad back in the day. I remember that. No. I remember whenever I, think, I, watched I think, wait, wait. There, I think that's there to stay. For yeah, for clarification, let's say it's gonna be a fad like motion gaming was. Yeah, this comes in. And everyone's like, oh, now the casual motion. gaming is here to stay, right? I think. Right. Yeah. But it, but now it's no longer mentioned, right? Like back then, it was like we had to make this game more casual. Yeah, there is a clear distinction. Yeah. yeah. So, I uh, think I think it's gonna be open worldy online things, kind of like the division. It's not and, gonna be a fad. That's there to stay. I. But it, but now now it's being mentioned a lot though. It's I being don't know. poured think, on a lot. Wait, wait, wait. It's being poured on, but like that, I think that's gonna be here for a long time. Like like when when is it a fad or when is it a fad? To me is like is like when a game developer comes up and he's like, we have this new open world blah 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 game. Back in the day, like like for example, back in the day, if someone's saying Bejeweled, they're like this casual <laughs> game where you match three. Nowadays, they'll just say, hey, it's just a match three game. They won't say casual. I wouldn't say that's a fad. I'm saying a fad. I... It's like everyone buying plastic instruments. Five years ago, and mm-hmm. now, now what do we do with those? I'm kind. Of, I, I kind of agree with Matt here, um, because I think I think there will be a resurgence of linear games, because no. it's, it's it's a little easier to tell a story no, no. within a linear game than it is. That's you true. can you can also have a lin- linear, a set linear path within a open world game. Like Normally like, the like there's a linear wait, wait, story wait. in Assassin's Creed, but you still have your giant open world. But the story yeah, always kind of kind of suffers, right? Like they're like they're like go attack like this big shuttle, and then you go to like quote unquote attack it, but really you're running through instances that someone else could have already cleared, and you just run through it really quick. You know what I mean? It does, yeah. It's not like I don't know. Like I would say, like The Last of Us is a linear game, and that's like better than any open world game I've ever played. So I personally think that all of these second screen apps are gonna fail. Yeah, it's already kind of failed. Like E3 just went crazy over that stuff. The Assassin's Creed app, useless. Yeah. There's some cool stuff you can do in it, but it's more of a hassle to go grab your iPad or Android device, 
just to tap away while you're playing your game. Well, is it is it one that you can you have to launch while your system's running, or do you, yeah, you, you use you it do. while your system's off? I think you can do it while your system's off, but but for like the, the 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 live map has to be on, obviously. Yeah. See, like like you, whatever I I would use that when my system's off. And remember the uh, the um, battlefield like um, battle commander or whatever it was. Yeah. So command motor. Isn't command there a Dead Rising three one? Oh, man, or is, that, or is that, that, is that, that one is so good. It's actually really good. Is that in Smart Glass? Yes. Yes. Like, do you yes, launch it, it through Smart Glass? Yes. See that uh, that kind of like oh, it, if, it's really if it was useful. one proprietary app that would be yeah that'd be the best but. Uh, but we haven't seen the, like the biggest ones yet, which is like Watch Dogs or the Division. The Division, you actually get to control a little like a uh, play a little drone and, I'll and actually that play. When I see it, and then Watch Dogs, you can either like screw people up, or you can help them out. Uh, yeah, I noticed in the trailer for Watch Dogs, like every time he needs a distraction, he'll make like a symbol on his phone. Mm-hmm. If you can actually do that, it'd be too good. And they That'd said they, awesome. they said you could do that when you're not even playing the game. So if you're just do a dude at a coffee shop. You could just like log on to someone's game and just yeah. start messing with them or something. Yeah, just do like set symbols. Yeah, that'd be amazing. But I don't know. If Anything else? Any other fads? I think virtual gaming is going to be a fad. Oh, kind of like the Oculus Rift. Yeah, I was going to say Oculus. As good as that thing may be, we've not tried it here. Obviously, we're not we're not going to the E threes or the, anything like that. Oh, somebody wants to send us one. <laughs> <laughs> sure. How much are the dev kits going for? Like four hundred bucks. Four hundred bucks. Yeah, we could scrounge up four hundred bucks. Mm. Hundred bucks each? I don't know. I think all these all pass over, and it comes back to just straight up controller. Good old controller or yeah. mouse and keyboard. You can't get rid of the controller. Yeah. Mm. What other fads? The the accessories one was a good one. The, the uh, plastic accessories. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was good. What do you guys think about microtransactions? Are they here to stay? I think so because uh, yeah. they they're not in the unless they put them in the way of completing a game they're just you think there. they're here to stay. Yeah, because it's it's no it's no cost to the developer to put them in. Yeah, it's true. And th- there's going to be someone who buys something on there, so they'll make money. I don't know. As of right now, the biggest game coming out for Xbox, Titanfall. There is no word of microtransactions yet. Well, that's because it's not a Microsoft game. <laughs> so. Well, to be to be fair though, microtransactions are like I hope they go away at least, but they're they're very intrusive. Like in, in games now, someone's like, oh, "Unlock this." I'm like, "Oh, do I have to pay for that?" Like that's my first question now. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's not good. It should be like, "What level should I have to be?" or something like that. Now it's just like you have to pay for how, that. How are they in Rise? In Rise, okay, so in Rise they're not mandatory, and you can earn the currency. It's like a gold. You can earn the currency by playing online. So ultimately, it's more like a boosting tool. You can just buy the currency and become really good yeah that's what i'm saying as long as it doesn't stop you from playing the game like where you need to buy a microtransaction i see no reason why a developer would choose not to put them in if they were already planning to so i think that we might see them for a while maybe maybe not because i think microsoft said they were rethinking that right they're like there was a test with all their their first xbox xbox one games right yeah like like forza 5 it's intrusive and it's annoying okay so like oh I'm, i just like well it's not really intrusive to the point of being like, like you can't play the game, but like I, I, I'm like sitting there like driving, and I beat beat the race, and then at the end it's like, press Y to level up faster, for Christ's sake, or like, <laughs> oh, I, I wanted this car, sorry, that car's available, but you have to pay four dollars. Oh, mm-hmm. good. So, I think Nintendo's trying to revitalize their uh their health gaming things oh. they're doing too. <laughs> oh, that that was a good fad. All the EA Fitness and yeah. stuff. I kind of wish that just died. There's still there's still fitness games going off on, on right now. There's Zumba. I see Zumba all over the place. I think they're actually selling. They must. Well, somebody's got to buy them. If I really cared about my health, I would get one probably, but I don't. I don't really care. So. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, if, if if they work to some extent, anyone who wants a quick workout before work or something like that and doesn't want to go to the gym. Yeah. To be honest, yeah, they point. Work. Some of the Ubisoft ones look pretty good. Yeah. That's what I mean so. What about these oh. dance games? Oh, the dance games are big too. I don't know; dance. those are pretty big. People love dancing. Yeah, get your groove on. But they were they, they were. They, <laughs> How they fun was really that at really um, big. at com- at a uh, fan expo? To just oh, dance, yeah. six seeing people dance. Like... That was fantastic. What if they weren't in costumes? That's fine. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that was that was funny seeing them in costumes. Yeah. yeah sure. All right. Is that it? I think. Yeah, that's our the philosophical <laughs> corner. <laughs> that so, was? That so was yeah, it. post a comment or answer a philosophical corner question. Help us rename it. 
Yeah, sure. You can even no, do that. No, 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 that's not up for grabs. Just <laughs> no, that's that's fine. Just have your username appear somewhere in the comments on our fiftieth. If episode you suggest a new name, page. you are not you're not being selected. Shut up, Belay. <laughs> don't don't, don't worry, Matt, Matt won't go in. <laughs> just to be clear, you can just comment anything, but we would like to hear these. It doesn't ensure that you're going to win. Everyone, every comment is going to be entered for the, the equal chance to win. Um, but we yeah. would just like like to hear some of your opinions. Um, on the philosoph- philosophical corner question, or if you have a new name for it, that'd be awesome too. So again, just to uh, reiterate what the uh, the contest is, comment on this this episode of the podcast here on YouTube, um, and you could have the chance to win an Ossian Studios Inc. game, The Shadow Sun. And if you're interested in any way, go check it out on the App Store. It's just, eight dollar value. Just search up the Sh- Shadow Sun, seven ninety nine. You got yourself an awesome 15-hour RPG. Many thanks to them again for yeah, providing us with that. Big thanks for those those copies. Um, and Stardust Drive. And yeah, thank you, Marty. Uh, another thank you to William Key and the Stardust Drive, Stardust Drive podcast team um, for helping sponsor this show. Um, we're returning the favor, and uh, thank you for an awesome promo they did. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Okay, so I think that concludes our 50th episode. Not as big as we wanted, but we pulled just, it off. Just not, just not as many people. That's yeah. all. Yeah. It, it happened. It happened. Yeah. Didn't have to, but it did. Yeah. Um, we've come a long way since we started, I think. Got, got ourselves up onto... Uh, <laughs> from the shoulder button, boys, to, uh, to day one patch here. We got ourselves up on iTunes, and we have some awesome content for you on our YouTube channel. So remember to like and subscribe on that YouTube channel. Share with your friends all over Facebook. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Especially share with your enemies. There you go. <laughs> Especially, yeah. Uh, uh, so thanks again, guys. Um, thanks for your continued support. Thank you, Adriano, for being our producer. No problem. Thank you, Martin Isaacs, for reviewing all the awesome apps. Yep. And thank you, Matt Lawrence. Never missed an episode. Never missed an episode. There yeah. You go. Thank you for being so <laughs> dedicated to Day One Patch. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for episode fifty-one. I'm crying. <laughs> Adriano will be here for that, but he'll be here for the hundredth episode, right? So. Stay tuned until the 100th episode. <laughs> uh, Approximately almost a year away. <laughs> yeah. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm.